Hello, I'm Andrea. Um, my name was Kelsang Denny when I was uh, ordained in the NKT. And like everyone else, uh, it was a terrible shock to me to find out that actually my ordination uh, was just, I think they're just like basic vows that most people can take. And, um, and the reason why I got into Buddhism is because I work with people um, with special needs and different um, mental health issues. And I was very interested in the mind and also in my ability to, um, to live happily. And my first experience of meditation was in the NKT. And um, I had peace, you know, for the first time ever in my life, just in a, like a GP class, they call them. And I had 10 minutes of just like nothing, no pressure. Um, and I had this very clear picture in my mind of lots of ordained people. And I felt very clearly and strongly that, you know, I want to be ordained, I want to be a nun. And that was just at the beginning, and I didn't really even know what I was talking about back then. Um, so it started out as a very sort of magical trip for me from the beginning. So um, I got, uh, went to a, a, a festival that they have, and from there I realised that Buddhism itself is exactly right for me, um, because I was very taken, passionate about love, and, and, and pure love, what love does, how it heals people, how love can transcend any kind of um, pain and, uh, and I wanted to know more and more how I could be like a walking uh, refuge for people. So Buddhism appealed to me greatly. I was like, this is definitely uh, my path because through meditation, I can get uh, strong clarity and anything that's thrown at me, it won't stop me loving people. And uh, unfortunately, the NKT are just there everywhere, they're everywhere. So you think, oh, you know, I'll, I'll go and I'll learn about meditation. And you look around and they've got centers everywhere. The books are everywhere. Um, it's just, they're just so absorbable and easy to get into. And, uh, and I did look actually at other areas of uh, Buddhism, but I didn't speak Tibetan. I wasn't, I'm not particularly clever, I didn't want to, I couldn't learn it, so I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. But because the NKT stuff was all English and translated, um, it just seemed like the quickest and clearest path for me. And um, so I ended up moving into a centre because, like I said, I was completely passionate and devoted to the teachings. And um, initially I wasn't bothered about Kelsang Gyatso or gurus or anything like that. I, wasn't really bothered about it it didn't seem applicable to me but as you stay in a center you know people start saying oh he's your guru and you're like oh is he and then you like have a look around and you think well there's no other teacher here that I can rely on and seems to know what he's on about so then you gradually absorb the guy and think okay I'll make him my guru and then you start to realize at that point that you're never going to see him or um, really be able to talk about your experiences or your practice and um, and I think from then, really, the seeds of disillusionment start seeping in. And for other people, I think at that point, they try to uh, go to their nearest teacher and try and make them their guru. But obviously, those people generally are unexperienced, brand new even in some places, just like a, in for a few months, and then they're made a teacher. So you start looking around for reliance on, you know, guru reliance on very uh, immature from a Buddhist sense, uh, people, and that just generally leads to utter disaster. Um, I'm lost now. Um, I was ordained in the, we think 98, probably late 90s. Um, when you get ordained, you have to um, cut all your hair off apart from a tiny little tuft here. And then um, you all go into uh, the meditation hall and sit down. When I was ordained, there was maybe 20 people um, then you sit down and you wait. Um, the guru comes in uh, with his two assistants. Um, they have a bowl with, with um, envelopes in. That's what your name's written on. And then um, he gives a talk. And, uh, and then the, um, there's no one else there. There's just him. In the audience, there's the other NKT ordained people, previously ordained people. Um, then the assistant, um, he gives a talk, then the assistant gives out, just hands out the envelopes, you know, like one at a time, so it doesn't look like the name is personal, it looks like the name is given to you randomly. And, um, and then you have to say these vows, and this is exactly what I was given 
uh, after my ordination. To me, I can't tell you how amazing to be a nun to me was. It was so important to me. I just thought it would be so beautiful and the best thing that I could ever do. So I ordained in this stupid, uh, appalling tradition and found out later, like I said, that I wasn't even ordained, but I did it very sincerely. I never really ever got to see Geshela, and then when I finally did get to see him, he told me that he wasn't even my teacher. So I was ordained in a, in a tradition where we had no real vows. Um, he wasn't even my teacher. I couldn't understand why I was even there really because, you know, how can you do that to somebody? Allow them to ordain and then tell them that they're not, you're not even responsible for them. Sorry. Anyway, so that's why I got involved. I really, I felt like um, being uh, a nun was one of the best things I could do for this crazy world and for me. And like I keep repeating, okay, if we didn't have real vows, gradually, when I got involved, there was no internet. So I couldn't check them out. I couldn't find out about the controversies behind everything. When I got involved, um, one of the main guys had been sleeping with nuns and doing really ridiculous things and power games. And he'd just been um, asked to leave, but no one told me that. And I didn't know anything about any of this um, CD sort of backdrop to the whole thing, which later repeated itself with the Samden, um, Samden Gatso. And there was another massive um, scandal where he was sleeping with nuns and passing out some kind of allegedly tantric um, tradition, um, which I never got involved in because it's not my thing. So really, I guess this is my pain and this is, you know, why uh, I would like to do this video because I can't really describe to you just how uh, bad it is for your your mind to be involved and meditate, get calm, trust, um, take all your whole heart and place it in this place where people actually don't care about you, where there's no duty of care towards you. Um, there's just hundreds of people who've just been thrown out and left. I had serious um, post-traumatic stress disorder after I had to disrobe. Um, I was never looked after. When I'd gone, no one cared about me. Um, I was left to my family, and they obviously had no idea, being typical um, people, um, Western people, they didn't understand Buddhism. Um, why a, a white woman would want to be involved in another country's a religion, they just thought I'd brought it on myself. Um, and now I know that they're... NKT, they're in um, in the NHS. I mean, my God, uh, they're in all of the places where they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be in schools. They're not a real tradition. So I'm really here just to say to people, just be careful and stay away because they've really damaged me in a really. I'm better though. Um, they damaged me before in a really bad way, um, and I've and I'm now compelled. Even though I would love to walk away from them, I'm utterly compelled to uh, warn people about them. I don't feel like I've got a choice. Um, and this, the other day, right, so since leaving the NKT, I've not been anywhere near teachers, lamas, Buddhism. They put me off my religion. I didn't pray. Um, I lost everything, my faith. And I tried to go to other lamas and say to them, can you help me understand what's happened? But nobody would go near me because I was XNKT. Anyway, well, I went to see the Dalai Lama with lots of my friends. And I thought, um, by this point, I didn't really care what he was like. I was expecting him to be, you know, spoilt um, by his position. I was expecting an aloof person, maybe, or someone who was just doing their job. Um, I wasn't expecting a human being. And actually, he was the first Lama, the first teacher that ever hugged me. And the first teacher that ever said to me that I'd been brave to manage to get through everything I've been through. And he was the first teacher that ever showed me love. And it was amazing to be cuddled. I mean, 
properly hugged um, by someone who who you think wouldn't have time for you, who would be so busy with other really important things, like what's happened to his country, you know, but he's spending time and, he's, and he was holding me uh, in such a fatherly way and in such a, an accepting way. And in that process, he's completely restored my faith in love and brought me full, full circle, really, back to my original reasons for getting into Buddhism. Um, he's given me a belief that regardless of what happens to you and your friends and your family, that if you're strong and you stay true to love, you, um, you are powerful and you can help people. So that's really what I wanted to say.